Hey yo, my planet coaster friends, Johnny Five Alive here, and welcome back to another coaster spotlight contest edition. Have you ever wondered who would win in a battle between an RMC and a winged coaster? Well, in today's episode, you get to find out exactly that. So stay tuned and let's check it out. All right, welcome back everyone. Hope you're all doing well today. We're gonna jump into things with Planko Hills created by OG Beebs and here they say, taking inspiration from the original roller coaster tycoons, Diamond Heights. Oh my goodness, Diamond Heights. Planko Hills is a small park located in lush forest nestled between the rolling hills featuring a lake and plenty of land for the potential future expansion. Despite the park's small size, guests can enjoy several attractions such as the classic Grand Carousel, a massive swinging frisbee perched at the top of the cliffside, a full-fledged food and drink shop, and the park's main attraction, Iraq, uh, Acrophobia versus Claustrophobia, Dueling Coasters, Steel versus Wood, Modern versus Old School, Fear of Heights versus Fear of Tight Spaces. Uh, however you want to qualify it, the coasters are sure to satisfy your craving for thrills. Apologies if this bends the rules theming-wise, but I hope the coasters are enjoyable. I don't think so. Let's uh, see what else he says here. A steel coaster ride at night, car one and seat one and four to get both sides of the wing. Wooden coaster daytime card 11, seat one or two. Okay, let's get into it. Planko Hills. He said inspired by Diamond Heights. I, I love me some Roller Coaster Tycoon 1. I mean, it doesn't really look like Diamond Heights, but I get the idea of Diamond Heights was like this uh, big lake and you built up on a mountain. I think they started you off with two ripping wooden coasters, if I remember correctly. Oh man, I might have to go back and play through that again. That's <laughs> so much fun. The Grand Carousel. Claustrophobia. Nice view of the lake here. I mean, it gives me uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon vibes being here. The, the fact that you got like the basic Planko style and the carousel there and the music going um, and just the nature of it all. Uh, yeah, I'm feeling very roller coaster tycoony right now, and I love that. Coming soon. Awesome. So, I feel like we should start with claustrophobia and then open it up with acrophobia. Claustrophobia. Heading down that. So, he was saying that he hopes he doesn't break the rules by picking these themes. But I think it's actually kind of smart, in my opinion. Uh, something versus something. You have claustrophobia versus acrophobia. And those are two definite things. Uh, we say we could be as abstract as you want. And even just this cue alone is very claustrophobic. Everything about this is saying claustrophobia. So as long as you continue with that running theme throughout the uh, creation, while we're on the coaster for feeling claustrophobic, then I think it works. You kind of nailed your theme. And as long as they're still dueling and they're competitive, then I don't see anything wrong with it personally. What do you guys think? <laughs> all right, here's a look at the claustrophobia. It's a wooden gnarler. Oh, I thought this was an RMC. I thought it was inverting and all that. All right, apologies for my introduction. We've made a mistake again. Let's look at the stats here. All looking pretty good. Now, what did he ask for ride seats? Wooden coaster, daytime, car 11, seat one or two. Why does seat two feel so much higher? I think we're a taller person. We'll go in this one. You know what? Does the, the look forward? We sit a little bit higher if we sit in the seat. As requested, seat 11. Let's go.
It's really tough to see the dueling elements from the wooden coaster perspective because of all those claustrophobic techniques. Now, why did I think this was an RMC at first? I think when you hide the wooden supports on the wooden coaster, it can be misleading. Anyways, let's head down the queue for arachnophobia or uh, why I miss acrophobia. We're not, we're not going on a spider coaster here. We're going on a, a <laughs> acrobatic coaster. So I definitely felt the claustrophobia, which is good. Now, one thing I was going to suggest is why wouldn't you want to choose night on the claustrophobia coaster? Because the, if you don't have light, that makes it even more claustrophobic. Whereas this one should be the daytime coaster because we get to experience the open skies. And, and the, the same could be said for this one. If it's all dark, we can't really tell that we're that high up in the air. When you can see everything a little bit more vivid, it, it'll increase the vertigo. So there's a look at all the stats if you want to see them. They asked us to go in on nighttime. And we're going to probably give this one another perspective in orbit so I can look around and see the dueling elements for certain. Let's go. Okay, I, I love that coaster personally. The Grophobia all on its own is a really fun experience. I love the vistas, the views, and all the little custom supports and things that you did there. Really, really fun. You did see the dueling elements a lot better from this perspective. And with that said, I wanna do an orbit view where we can sort of uh, look even closer. And we might wanna go to the back of the car for this one. So uh, we tail behind it. Let's do this. My goal with the orbit view has always been to try to look at the other coaster as much as possible just to see as many dueling elements and they are there for sure you just can't notice it from the wooden coaster as much it's just so loud it is claustrophobic it's low to the ground where the other coaster is a little bit higher up it's just a little bit more distracting i would say but the dueling elements are for sure there and i think the theming is there like in in terms of like personal theming each coaster having its own unique personality i think it's still there in the the reasons i 
I said before. I don't think you're cheating at all by saying one's acrophobia and one is claustrophobia. In fact, that's a it's a it's an interesting approach. We have claustrophobic elements on that coaster, and we have acrobatic elements or air, what do you call it, vertigo elements on this one. And then you have these fun designs and cool supports strewn about the uh, landscape. You made a fun forest area and I think it's there. I'm trying to think of a comparison because the last creation that we just came off of Professor Worst's energy run was a very much a similar nature kind of style creation, but it was just experiment one and two. Whereas this, you're kind of explaining what they are and why. So I think the el the theming is a little bit ex more exponential here than the last creation. And I think that's what I was looking for in the last creation. I was saying, I don't know what separates these two. And if you would have said that this is Professor Worst's experimentations here, one to see how claustrophobic people are and see how people can push their fears of heights suddenly it makes sense right so I, that's exactly what I was looking for in the last creation is something to distinguish the two and I think this is a great example of that if these were experiments to test people's fears it would all make sense to me now but unfortunately they're different creations and they're different creators and that wasn't <laughs> that's not the case but uh I just yeah I wanted to make a callback there because this theming does make sense to me even though it's a little bit abstract in the sense that you've done it through the design of the coasters but not necessarily you've also done it through the design of the theming you created claustrophobic spaces you created open scary drops so I, I like it i really do i think this is a very strong builder submission H had this thought come to mind if all the brackets were equal like if i pre-ranked people going into the contest going oh this is an advanced creation oh this is an expert creation this is a master creation because throughout this bracket and even the new builder bracket we clearly have some masters or up-and-coming masters we have some up-and-coming experts and so on and so forth. I think uh, if I were to pre-put people in their future brackets ahead of time and give promotions before the contest started, wouldn't that be cool <laughs> it would give some interesting results for sure however that's still unfair because you have these people coming forward saying this is my very first creation ever it's like well why are you in the master builder bracket and we can make a bad judgment call where we're like this person's creation is legendary let's put them in the legendary bracket and uh, they end up getting smashed by the actual legends who have built thing after thing after thing so obviously it's not fair but i thought it was a fun idea to uh just kind of like an exercise like what would it be like if i did that anyways bring Bringing it all back around i think this is builder creation that's looking advanced quality and it deserves to be in the builder bracket and it would be a top builder bracket creation it's a, it, it shows your builder skills, but it shows that you're advancing and you're working your way up to the advanced builder bracket. I think it's fitting in this bracket, but it shows that you're improving and you're an advanced style builder for sure, which is a positive thing. Uh, hopefully that didn't come off wrong, but that's uh, what I meant by that is if there weren't other people in this bracket that clearly deserve to be in higher brackets, I think this would be a top three for me personally in this builder bracket. Boom. What did you guys think? Leave your comments down below for OG Beeb's very first Planet Coaster creation. And that's going to do it for me in today's video, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll see you in the next contest submission. Bye now.